we can live without food for a couple of days. We can also live without water for a couple of days, but we cannot live without oxygen for more than three to four minutes. And that's why oxygen is called prana, which is called life force. 50 trillion cells in the human body require oxygen every second of the day, every second of the night while you sleep. Every function, every biochemical function, every physiological function in the human body requires the right amount of oxygen to sustain its functions. So if we have less oxygen reaching our cells, we have problems. For some people, these problems may be sickness. For some of them, it could be low energy levels. For some people, it could be low immunity. For some people, it could be emotions like anger, irritability, frustration. Every function in the human body depends on oxygen, and yet we don't breathe we don't breathe the right way. Like right now, if I ask all of you to pause and look at the way you're breathing, are you breathing to your full capacity? And the answer is no. They say we don't even use 10% of our lungs capacity, which means we are clearly depriving all those 50 trillion cells of oxygen, the very thing, which is inexpensive and free. Maybe not too clean today, but it's still available for us to breathe and we only have to use the right techniques and mindfulness, mindfulness to make sure that we're breathing the right way. So there's pranayama, there's yoga, there's exercise, fantastic ways to make sure that we breathe the right way. But it's not about that. Like I said, we have access to good food, we have access to gyms and trainers and nutritionists and doctors and yoga therapists and all of that. But it doesn't matter if we don't take the learnings and let it slip into our daily life. We could spend an hour sitting and meditating and practicing mindfulness and practicing to be calm. But when we're hit in life with a situation that challenges that calm, that challenges our emotions, if we don't apply the lesson that we've learned or we're learning during that one hour of meditation or yoga, it's useless. The same thing with exercise. You could be working on Pilates, you could be working on your core, you could be squatting, bench lifting, doing calisthenics, whatever it is in that one hour. But if you don't apply what you've learned, like your posture at work, your posture when you walk, your posture when you sit, if you don't let these learnings slip into your life, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We have to learn to take the learnings that we learn and apply it to life. So today, there's a simple technique that we need to keep practicing until it becomes part of us. It is already part of us, but because our lives are too chaotic, because our mind is muddled with constant thoughts and we move from one thing to another in this fast-paced life, we forget the very basics of breathing. <clears throat> So we all know about the sympathetic nervous system that we all have. We have a sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight and flight, your stress response system. When you are in this system, it's good for you to save you from situations, to help you react efficiently, to help you jump out, you know, jump out of the way of a moving car or something like that. It's great for you. The problem is when you stay in your sympathetic nervous system for too long. Okay? And then you have your parasympathetic nervous system, which is also called your rest and digest this is the system where you're able to fall asleep easily, where you're able to sleep for a longer period of time, where you're able to eat and digest your food and assimilate and absorb your food the right way. You can never rest when you're in the fight and flight response. You can never efficiently digest, assimilate and absorb the food when you're in the, when you're in the sympathetic nervous system. You need to be in the right system for the body to do its functions the right way. And that one secret ingredient that helps you move from sympathetic to parasympathetic, from stress, fight and flight, to rest and digest, is oxygen. And here's a simple test for you. The next time you're in a stressful situation, observe your breathing. Your breathing won't be full. But once the, once the stress, it'll be short. You'll have like short breaths that you're taking in oxygen for. But when you see that you're moving from sympathetic to parasympathetic nervous system, that means the stress is now reducing, you suddenly start breathing better. Your lungs start taking in more oxygen. Oxygen has the ability to move you from fight and flight to rest and digest, which is why before we start eating a meal, the best way we can center ourselves is, of course, blessing your food, offering thanks for your food, and taking a couple of deep breaths to make sure that you move into the rest and digest um, nervous system of the human body, which is why watching TV, having uncomfortable conversations, working lunches, hurried lunches on the go, speaking on the phone, it's practically useless. You're, you're hardly digesting any of the nutrients from the food that you eat. So mealtimes is a time for you to rest and digest, sit with your family, have good conversations, or just mindfully eat. Just don't talk for that 
15 or 20 minutes and you find that you eat less, you digest your food better, you chew your food mindfully, you're left with absolutely no bloating, acidity or flatulence. That's the beauty of oxygen. Because what does oxygen do in the human body? Oxygen helps us to burn fat. Oxygen is the fuel that helps you digest the system to digest heavy food, break it down, absorb. All the energy required in the human body is fueled by none other than oxygen. So here's a simple breathing technique that you can use. It is very, very simple. There are so many out there, but one by one, you've got to perfect simplicity. Like I said, people know so much and they take so many classes, but it's useless if you don't let it slip into your daily life and you apply it. So the technique is as simple as this. For a count of four seconds, or you may do six, or you may do eight, develop, uh, depending on your lung capacity and how advanced you may be in this breathing technique. So you simply close your mouth, you sit with your back straight, and through your nostrils, you inhale for one, two, three, four, and then you immediately exhale through your nose. You keep your mouth closed. One, two, three, four. And then you inhale again, one, two, three, four, and you exhale, one, two, three, four. If that's too simple for you, and if it's effortless for you, then you do six seconds, and then you do eight seconds. But you want to aim to get at least six to 10 complete breaths. One complete breath would be the inhale and the exhale together. That's one breath. So you can do this six times or 10 times, and it's guaranteed to calm you down. It's guaranteed to shift those systems in your body. You have high blood pressure, check your pressure before this breathing technique, check your pressure post this breathing technique. And that's self-realization, how oxygen and being calm allows your blood pressure to naturally reduce. So all the people who have anxiety and all of these stress issues, I encourage you to do the test because when you see how your levels drop, because right now there are so many people out there who only believe that their blood pressure can drop with medication. And yes, it's true. Medication will treat your symptom of high blood pressure along with side effects. Be on the pill if you need to, but also open yourself to trying to breathe the right way, getting the right oxygen, because the human body has this own intelligent and brilliant system which is designed to protect you and work for you all the time if you use it the right way. So, for example, whenever you're in an uncomfortable situation or you're having an argument, why do we lose control of the things we say in anger? And we say, oh, I said that in anger. Why do we lose control when we're angry or we're having arguments or we're having emotional discussions? It's very simple. It's based on science. The moment we move into fight and flight, the body starts pulling blood from your brain to all your muscles to, prevent, to prepare you to fight or to flee. Your muscles need all that blood and it pulls that blood from your head to your muscles, which means we don't have enough of blood that helps us to think the right way. That's why we get disillusioned. We say things we don't mean. We speak in aggression. We raise our voices. It's as simple as that. So it's always best to walk away from a stressful situation if it's in your control. And I'm not saying let go of it. Come back later when you're calmer, when that blood's gone back to your brain, where you can have a skillful communication. So it involves two processes. At that point, if something's upsetting you, someone uh, is upsetting you, try and accept it for, that, for those few seconds. That acceptance will allow you to step away, take care of your own heart and your health, and come back with more clarity of thought to have a skillful communication with that person and resolve the issue. Nothing, get res nothing gets resolved in anger. Everything gets resolved when there's calmness and there's peace in our conversation. So you've got to try that no matter how much we're provoked. If we can step aside from the situ situation and then revisit it later when you're calm and you know what you want to say to that particular person and that changes the entire dynamics of the situation. It's easy for me to say that, very difficult to practice, but that's the beauty of life. We've got to keep on practicing the things that we want to achieve. So once again, you can use this breathing technique at home, in a car, in a flight, probably not in Delhi at this point, but wherever you are, you could be in a stressful situation talking to someone but focusing on your breathing. When you focus on your breathing, guess what? You've got to keep your mouth closed. So that's, that's double fold. You're probably not saying the wrong things at the wrong time. So listen and breathe. Inhale, exhale. The more oxygen you take in, the more magic you create in all those trillions and trillions of cells in your human body. So you want to try practicing this right away. The idea is keep doing it until it becomes a habit. Like you brush your teeth every morning, you keep practicing your breathing, you keep practicing your visualization, you keep practicing your meditation, your exercise, eating well. All of these things have to become habits. We have a choice 
or we have an excuse. You all, all of us have that reset button in us. We just got to wake up, identify it, and hit it. Have a good day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. Have a great day.